Hey, I'm Tommy Chong. Welcome to High on Homegrown. Yes, yes, everybody, and welcome to this week's Grow Guides from High on Homegrown, the cannabis podcast from PersisGrowRoom.com. Uh, this episode is all about the problems you might encounter throughout your grow, like if you get bugs or nutrient deficiencies or the plant looks damaged in some way. This is the kind of thing that we're going to cover in this episode. Now, it's really hard to cover all these kind of details in an audio format like this, but if you need any help or you have any questions, then you know just to head over to percysgrowroom.com and we'll be able to help you out over there and answer any questions that you have. And also, while you're over there, we have a special competition running right now. All you have to do is sign up and have 50 posts. It don't take long to get 50 posts. I know it sounds a bit intimidating, but it really doesn't take very long. So if, if you're a member of Persis and you have more than 50 posts, you can enter the competition to win a HLG 600R spec. This is a beast of an LED grow light. It's one of the best on the market. It is made to cover 1000 watt HID and it's, it's perfect for a 4x4 or a 5x5 grow tent. And you could win this 100% free. All you got to do is enter the competition and play in the games and you might win this, this light. So if you want to give it a shot, head over to Persis and sign up, become a member, get involved in the competition. It's going to be good fun. But for now, here is the Grow Guides all about cannabis plant deficiencies. I hope you learned something from this episode. And again, if you need any help with anything at all, you can find us on percysgrowroom.com. See you there. So we're talking about, because, you know, by now people should be growing their own cannabis from listening all to all the episodes we've done since the start of the year. We've covered pretty much everything you need to know to grow your own cannabis from start to finish, how to make some hash, you know, how to make some edibles. All, all these things have been covered so far, but we haven't covered what to do if you get any problems. And, you know, it's not all, always plain sailing. It's not like you pop some seeds and there won't be any problems. It'll just finish in about 12 weeks time and you're all good there are there are issues which you will encounter along the way some issues are more likely than others but you know it's it's very rare that it is plain sailing all the way through unless you have some experience then it does get much easier but as you're starting out there will be issues and you need to know how to fight against these issues and make sure that your plants stay happy and healthy for as long as possible so that's what we're going to be talking about this week so we should start off with like uh deciding what are some some of the most common issues when you're reading about on forums a lot of the time you're going to hear cal mac oh geez and look anytime <laughs> you go to a forum it seems like that's you're going to get that answer no matter what the problem is if you ask the question mm -hmm. somebody on that site's going to say cal mac but the thing is cal mac is usually one which he, he has problems with because the cannabis plant uses a lot of uh, calcium yeah uh, magnesium helps calcium move around the plant so it needs a, a decent amount of both mm -hmm. and if you're growing in cocoa as well cocoa will absorb the calcium into itself rather than giving it to the plant which can cause issues and then you have the nutrients that aren't balanced properly and don't have enough calmag so calmag can become a problem and even though we do say uh, we take the piss out of it a lot it is a, a common issue that happens in cannabis plants but it's it's for numerous reasons but it's not, not as often as people make out. You know, it's like any time you do see a plant issue, even if it's PK, if it's got fucking spider mites there, cow mag, it's, like, it's, it's not going to work like that. You know? Yeah, but I think that's just become a joke within the grown community, hasn't yeah, it? Not? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is. But, you know, at, at the same time, though, um, a lot of people think that, okay, it's a cow mag deficiency. All you have yeah. to do is add more cow mag. And I think we'll get into this in a little while. It's not always that simple. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be a cow mag deficiency, but what's causing that? The funniest place I've ever seen that commented actually was underneath a, a, a picture the cops put up. Somebody put it up there. Oh, it needs more Calmag. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Big but that's it because it does. It has turned into a joke for a lot of people. Just because it's a joke doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, just it's just it's but it's uh misdiagnosed a lot. If you're like, feeding the plant properly in the first place, one? sorry, Martin. I think it's become a joke because it just happens so much. Just mm -hmm. like it's the most frequent thing that people uh, run into issues with. 
well, so it, therefore, the, in most foods, you're going to get plenty of the MPK, which is the nitrogen, mm -hmm. potassium, and phosphorus. And that there's already plenty of that. You see the numbers on the front, but calcium is the next one after that. That's what the cannabis plant uses fourth. You know, it's fourth in line, and it uses a shitload of it. So if the nutrients you're using don't have the right level, then there is going to be just a small deficiency. The plant's going to be getting just not enough, just a little bit. And then over time, that starts to add up, and that's where a problem kicks in. So but just supplementing it with a little bit throughout um, throughout the growth. You know, I, sometimes, well, when I was growing in cocoa, because I don't use any nutrients now, it's all organics and shit. But when I was growing in cocoa, I just used it once a week, a couple of milliliters, uh, right, depending on how much water I'm using. Say about half a milliliter per liter is what I'd use, just once or twice a week. And the plants are always happy with that. Well, with CalMag for me, though, because I'm using rainwater and there's a zero calcium mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. rainwater, I eat CalMag in mine every time I put, put water to yeah. the plants. It's a good point as well, though, because a lot of people use tap water when they're growing indoors, and tap water will have some calcium in it. And that's where all the lime scale gets built up and shit over time. You know, and you'll have yep. hard water and a soft water, which will have different amount of calcium in it. So it'll, it's all difficult to properly diagnose. And, and it's difficult to feed your cannabis plant the right amount of calcium because you don't know what's going in the background. What's that's in the all... newts plus the water plus what's in the, in the cocoa. Mm -hmm. It's all confusing. That's all the process of dialing in your growth because you're going to have to dial in your nutrients based upon your water supply mm -hmm. and whatever you're growing in. So all of that process you'll learn in the dialing process. Mm -hmm. And it How isn't much? very difficult. You know, once you've got it, it's all good. I, I used to find that just using some uh, magnesium salt, some Epsom salts, uh, magnesium sulfate, you, you can buy it at most beauty stores, a hundred percent magnesium sulfate, or you can go to the gardening center for it. It's just basic Epsom salts and using uh, a teaspoon of that for every three liters of water you have and just spray your plants with that after a few weeks of it growing. And that magnesium comes in and it helps the calcium get used up by the plant and it helps it move around the plant to the spots where it's needed as well. So it's important to have a good balance of magnesium and calcium because without the magnesium, the calcium can't go anywhere anyway. So a little blast of the magnesium salts about four weeks into the grow just keeps the, uh, keeps the engine running off fine. You know that... The center of a chlorophyll molecule is a magnesium atom. Yes. And nitrogen is a big part as well, though, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But without magnesium, you can't build chlorophyll, and therefore you don't get yellow leaves, which is why magnesium deficiency show up as a yellow mm -hmm. in the intravenal area mm -hmm. on your leaf. Mm -hmm. It's a very mobile nutrient, though, um, yeah, yeah. and hard to overdose with. I never run into problems with calcium for the aforementioned reasons that there's some in my water and it has to be available calcium too. I'm not too keen on what type of calcium is available. Calcium carbonate is generally what's in your water. That's mm -hmm. what lime is, lime scale buildup. Um, uh, and then, yeah, that won't, I don't think you, your plants can absorb that, but maybe with the microbial action, there's some, right, right. if it's in a calcium ionic form, uh, then plants will be able to uptake that. I'm not sure what type of calcium but anyway yeah so i always just said like mackie said the magnesium sulfate because i run into magnesium issues if i do run into anything in my super soil mm -hmm. and yeah it's really easy to apply whether and that's older. it when you use that the plant might not be deficient in calcium it just can't move it around itself because there's not enough magnesium so if you introduce some magnesium the calcium deficiency can be solved yeah. I think phosphorus has something to do too. Uh, the, the two calcium, magnesium and phosphorus are related. I'm not, I can't remember exactly how, but one, if there's too much or if the pH yep. is off, it's, you, you can't, uh, one of them becomes locked out, right? And then you get mm. the build up, and then the plant becomes sick when it's not really yeah. deficient. The, the calcium, the magnesium and the phosphorus are all interlinked. One, each one will inhibit the other. So it's a balanced situation. If you add one, some of one, you're actually inhibiting the other two. So it's it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's why I was saying you can't just randomly say, well, it needs CalMag, get more CalMag, because you may be in a lockout situation instead of a deficiency situation mm -hmm. where you've got too much of one thing and it's causing you not to take up what you think you need. So it's right. tricky sometimes. And the way you're going to tell about these deficiencies as well is specifically what the leaves look like and where on the leaves, where on the plant 
the leaves are having the problems. So there's, if you get a nitrogen, potassium or phosphorus deficiency, you're probably going to see the leaves at the bottom of the plant start to turn yellow before everything else does because the plant's taking those nutrients and moving it around the plant and like forgetting about the leaves at the bottom that are not going to get as much light it just lets them die off so it takes food from there and disperses it to where it's needed so if you're looking at your plants and the bottom leaves are starting to look a lighter green or start to turn yellow or look a different shade than the rest of the plant does then that means that you could be suffering a deficiency there nitrogen yeah. and magnesium do look fairly similar but once you you know you see it a couple times you, you'll be able to tell them apart quite easily mm -hmm. yeah, nitrogen I'm is like i don't know it it almost just kind of like fades indiscriminately and the leaves mm -hmm. become really mm -hmm. floppy whereas magnesium the leaves stay fairly rigid but it starts right between the veins of the leaves and yes yeah. yep toward the veins um, like a little more stripy yeah and then you get dead spots later on so but yeah yeah, and all of this will depend on what medium you're in as well. You know, it's like if you're in a good living soil and shit, then you probably won't see many of these deficiencies until later on in the grow. And then it's probably going to be uh, potassium or phosphorus because the plant will be flowering at that stage. There should be plenty of nitrogen in the in the medium to cover your, cover your plants during veg. But when you're in hydro there, and Husky said it, don't guess your needs, just flush with the correct ratio if in hydro. It's like to some extent that's right, but you need to know what's going in and what's coming out. Uh, like you're going to mix up your feed. You, say you put one milliliter per liter of your, your A and your B and your salt-based nutrients and you mix it up and then you feed the cocoa or the DWC or your, your hydro medium. You, you water it slash feed it. You know, you put that mix in through the, the root zone and let the plant absorb it. And then you monitor what happens with the runoff, what comes out the bottom of the pot, because that's going to tell you what's happening in between. And if you're putting the water into the top of the cocoa, for example, just pouring it in and it's going in with an EC of 1.5, but it's coming out at the bottom with an EC of 1.0, it means you need to feed the plant a little bit more because it's eating more than what you're giving it. And then on the on the other side, if you water it to 1.5 and it comes out 1.75, 1.8, it means you, you're feeding the plant too much and stuff's getting left behind. So if you, you can find the balance of what's what's good to feed your plant uh, when you're growing in cocoa and hydroponics like that just by monitoring what's going in and what's coming out. And usually if you get that balance to be a, you're just a little bit over 1.5, if you're feeding 1.5, then you want to see 1.6 coming out. That'll be okay. You can roll with that. Plant's happy there. But don't go much over that. It's an easy way to tell if your plant is feeding, if your plant is eating too much or not enough. It's a good advice, even for soil. Like in my case with super soil, mm. I don't necessarily measure the EC because, like, I. Uh, it's not salt based shit, is it? Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. So I can't, I can't really change that because, you know, it's all built in. But I do test the pH and the TDS. Mm. And usually, in like 99% of cases, if I'm seeing weird shit going on in my plant, um, if I know what it, if it's like obvious that I like, oh, this batch was, I forgot to add the blood meal or something and there's no nitrogen, then I know what it is, then I can fix it like that. But 99% mm -hmm. of the time I don't because in super soil, it is a bit harder to diagnose because you're not adding stuff in. And then when it goes wrong, when you add this, there's certain thing you can say, okay, it was probably that, yeah. um, likely it's a lockout issue. Um, so yeah, flush it, flush you, the you fuck brought out up of a, it. You brought up a good point there too, with the pH. Yeah. The pH of the soil is, is or the soil or the, uh, the medium. It, right. It's massively important. If the, if the pH is off by too much, then it's not going to eat regardless of if it's got food available to it. Oh, yeah, we didn't even really mention that. That's like, in my experience, that is the number one thing as to mm -hmm. why shit is wrong mm -hmm. because your pH is drifted. Maybe yeah. you forgot a pH. Maybe there's just some kind of crazy activity going on in there. Like, I'm not an expert in microbial fucking science. So, like, I know microbes shit out stuff. Certain microbes will acidify, certain microbes will base, basify, whatever, you know, alkaline eyes. And, and yeah, your pH can, can drift for sure. And especially if you're adding, you know, fish, uh, hydrolysate or emulsions, like some of these things, they can all alter the pH. So you got to make sure your pH, at least in soil, stays between like, you know, 
at, at the very least 5.9 to 6 and at the very most probably 6.8 so uh, if it's if you test your runoff because what you put in doesn't really matter it's what comes out and use distilled water that has absolutely nothing in it so whatever is in the soil won't be skewed by some you know pre-existing components in your water and flush the fuck out of it and then take take samples every you know as soon as the water starts coming out and halfway through the dripping right at the end so you can see what your ph is and likely you're going to see that it's way off so reset the reset the medium give it a light feeding if you need to um maybe some epsom salts like mackie mentioned because mag magnesium is a very mobile nutrient and it will get washed out quite easily now woody bought something up here in the chat if you're having calcium magnesium problem more than likely it's because you're having an excess and you're getting locked out not deficiency yeah right. the, we say that a lot we say deficiency a lot yeah. because you know it's just because the plant looks dodgy we don't mean specifically but it's deficient in particular nutrients because yeah. there could be plenty of nutrients in the medium but the plant isn't absorbing it it's not like there isn't the, enough in the medium the plant is deficient the medium is not yeah but yeah there you it's, go good way to put it yeah right and, and that could be down to the ph or lockout you know, yeah. uh, salt buildup. If you use too many salts, it can like block the roots and stop all this shit going into the plant anyway. And that's yeah. why when you flush the plant after that, you'll see a high EC. Say so, uh, we use the 1.5 example again, but that is a high EC as well. Don't aim for 1.5. But if you put 1.5 and it starts coming out 2.0, 2.5, something massive like that, then there's a chance that the plant has got a salt buildup and it's not going to eat anything. You need to give it a good flush, get everything out of it and reset the medium. And you can yeah, do that sure. just by monitoring the uh, the pH and the EC of the water as it's coming out of the pot. And then when it becomes to a decent level, you can stop and rebalance it with a decent feed. It, it's easy right. to do. But we'll discuss that more in a bit. What are you saying there, TJ? I just wanted to quickly say about temperature. Don't underestimate temperature too, because cold mm -hmm. temperatures, for example, can cause lockout as well. Like Husky said, uh, VPD and environment. Environment, I would say, includes VPD. So if you keep your environment like in a nice, healthy spot, then... You won't run into those issues uh from the environment yeah so you, when you look at your plant that you're going to tell most of the time if there's a problem it will be because of how the leaves or the plant in general is looking and if you're seeing the color of the leaf leaves get faded at, at the bottom or anywhere over the leaf or some different coloration then it's probably because you're having some kind of nutrient deficiency or excess uh well, yeah if you have bugs on your plant then they're gonna be either eating the leaves or sucking juices out the leaves or laying eggs on the leaves and you'll start to see differences in how the leaves look because of that shit too so, so uh, the famous one is spider mites spider mites are the i wouldn't say the most common but they're the most well-known pests for attacking cannabis plants who's had spider mites before not in my case not cannabis at all no. knocking no. on wood holy no. fuck what about you martin you had these before no not spider mites martin me no never sweet so yeah. we all know of them don't we? we all know about these these red spider mites that attack plants or black spider mites they come in all different colors so and they're Blood really mites. difficult to see there's all mm -hmm. kinds of mites man and mites are the fucking worst well by the time you see the mites it's too late mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they call them the borg like you know if anybody's a star trek fan it, yeah. it is a perfect name for them because they move in and fucking destroy everything and assimilate your you plants yeah one day you see a few webs and two days later you don't see any plant all you mm -hmm. see is web yeah. you, they you, can you, move when it's time you're more than likely to see the effect it's having on the plant before you see the actual bugs and it, it's uh it's the same with a lot of the bugs as well you'll see the effect it's having on the plant before you see the bug thrips are my pain man yeah thrips are a bastard as well they're easy to tell that you have like if you see a little like a little bit looks like somebody spit on your leaf and the spit dried up mm -hmm. little shiny bits then that's thrips and they can go to hell i actually don't mind them <laughs> aphids are the, the worst in my opinion i i will move out of my house if i have aphids i've so. never had uh, the only thing i've had is thrips i've never had anything else oh yeah, i had thrips so last bad. year too yeah, I deal with thrips pretty much continuously. I always have thrips and I always have fungus gnats and they don't really bother me because I use IPM, which we'll talk about probably in a minute here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had an outdoor plant there last year, uh, TG, and uh, aphids, man, mm. fucking mangled it. Um, oh, they just devastate it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they, they were in the millions on the bloody thing. Like. Oh, 
Me too. So many of them. It was cra- it was really cool to see. Um, yeah. Luckily, it, it was a male plant as well, so I didn't give a shit. Okay. Like, you know, there you go. Nice. <laughs> yeah, they engulf the stem. Like you can't see the stem. They are just yeah. they cover it. It's fucking incredible, but disgusting for smoking it afterwards. You get, <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. I hate aphids. And if they get in your tent inside, good luck. Mm. It's like, yeah, it's a nuke everything, man. Yeah, nuke everything. This was a plant that I meant to throw into my compost heap, and I ended up leaving it next to the compost bin. And the bloody thing grew away like grand until the aphids got at it. Basket aphids. Yeah. They suck. Yeah, a good healthy plant has a good immune system and should be able to fight off most bugs, but you're still going to get them little fuckers that get in because there's the um, economical threshold as well where there'll be enough bugs where your plant can have some on it and it won't suffer too much. But if it starts to get out of control, then the plant will obviously suffer because the bugs are eating it to fuck. Yeah. You keep an eye out for things like that. Sorry, monkey. That's because in an indoor environment, the problem you'll have is if you get something like spider mites in, there's no, there's no uh, natural predators in your tent for those Mm -hmm. spider mites outdoors. If you get spider mites, you've got things that'll eat them like wasps and things like that. Mm -hmm. Indoors, you don't have that. So this is why it gets really important. It's important to control what you bring into your indoor garden. Mm-hmm. I, how I, you bring I it use, in, yes. I, I use some of the, the can of cocoa stuff, you know, the bagged stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, fuck me, man, I got I got invaded by fungus gnats. Damn, in cocoa. Yeah, and I can remember I was working in the grow shop a couple of years back and uh, th- there was a few people who came back complaining about that as well with that. With that. But particularly the, the Canna uh, brand of it, I don't know whatever way they were storing it or something, but the stuff was coming in and yeah. every now and again, people were getting bloody infested by fungus gnats. Mm. heard that about yeah. Promix here Mikey, too. Yeah, I've had that with Playground over here. But Canna over here in the UK has always been fine for me. I think it's just how it's stored when it gets to the grow uh-huh. shop. If it's stored incorrectly, then something's going to get in there, live in there and fucking love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if you if you think you have bugs, then you're going to be looking for little dots on the leaves or obvious bite marks out of the leaves. Or in worst case scenario, with spider mites, they're going to like lay a web over the top of your plant. And if you get to that stage, you're pretty fucked at that stage. You'll it's, know. Mm-hmm. You'll know. Mm-hmm. Each each bug has its kind of like characteristic damage mm-hmm. it does. Like the spit mark, which TG mentioned from the thrips yeah. and the webs from the spider mites and the aphids when you have aphids. Because they're big enough to see. Mm -hmm. Aphids are the worst because they're like so slow and they're just like, we don't give a fuck about (laughs) you. Of course they're slow, man. You see the amount of of weed they eat? (laughs) Yeah. And they you kill them and you'll never get them all. And aphids can both sexually and asexually reproduce. Mm -hmm. So they don't give a fuck. Um, They're like, yeah, they're fucking crazy little bugs and I hate them so much. So then there's a... Sorry, sorry, Martin. Yeah, no, I was just going to say they don't start getting into their wings until they're in their millions then. Mm. Yeah, good once, luck then. Once they start running out of room, they're just like, right, grand, I'm just going to grow wings and fly. Yeah, they just, <laughs> they're just <cunt>. fucking like, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so far we've uh, we covered the nutrients. So you're looking at the leaves to see the color of the plant change. And then we're, we're looking at bugs. You might see dots or bites or webs on the plant or the bugs themselves. But then you've also got some e- environmental damages that can happen to the plant as well. Stuff called uh, wind burn. Mm-hmm. Like if you have the fan blasting constantly a particular leaf, then it might dry out that leaf faster than the other leaves and it will look all crispy and, uh, and damaged. If you have uh, the, if you use the old school HPS like Martin, for example, if you let the plant grow too close to that, then it's, the leaves at the top are going to get burnt. And if you're growing with LED and it gets too close to the top, then they're going to start to lose their color because the fl- chlorophyll gets damaged and it'll be, they will start getting bleached. So you yeah. need to keep out for things like that. There's, there's lots of different signs that will show off that there's something wrong with your plant. You just have to learn to recognize them. And, and it, it takes practice. It takes time to be able to recognize them all because there's not f- just a few. There is, mm-hmm. there is many of them you have to look out for. Well, the one thing with a fan you mentioned anyway is just don't ever point a fan directly at a plant unless it's an mm-hmm. oscillating fan. Mm-hmm. And if it's oscillating and it's going to be pointing at the fans, my heart's not strong enough to, to 
but yeah. get them to bend over and break. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it. Isolate the fan, man. It's important. You, you don't ever point a fan directly with, without it yeah. isolating. And, we, and when it turns side to side is what we mean when we say isolate. If it's yeah. just pointing at the, flan, uh, at the fan 100% of the time, then you, you might see issues. And there's a couple more things as well. If you're overwatering or underwatering your plant, you have to be able to keep an eye out for things like that. Now, if you're in cocoa or hydroponics, then you're not going to be able to overwater your plants pretty much. It's, it's what it lives in. In cocoa, it's got perfect drainage. And you just, as long as you get your runoff away, you shouldn't be seeing any overwater, overwatering issues in cocoa. And if you're growing in water like DWC or, uh, or ebb and flow and things like that, then as long as your air stones are working, and there's oxygen getting to your plants that way, then you, you should be fine. You, you don't get overwatering in hydroponic mediums. But you can in soil mediums, right, TG? What are the symptoms of, uh, well, what was the symptoms of uh, overwatered plants in soil? Underwatered plants in soil? No, overwatered. Oh, overwatered. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you'll get droopy, shitty looking leaves. Basically, you might start getting, it's hard to tell because you can't look under the soil, but your roots will probably start rotting due to an or, or anoxic conditions. Maybe you'll getting, start getting bad bacteria and mm-hmm. microbes to start reproducing and creating a toxic environment that, you know, will kill off the roots. And uh, yeah, basically, if your plant is like, you know, you've been feeding it great and it's just like, what the fuck? It's, you know, it still doesn't look good, but if your if your soil is sopping wet, then that, that could be a reason, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, well draining yeah. soil is really important too. Mm-hmm. So and getting rid of runoff, man. But, you know, if you get yeah. any runoff, you shouldn't get too much runoff when you're using an organic or living soil. You want to try and keep everything locked in. But if you're using salt based nutrients, you know, you want runoff. Yeah. And you want to be able to get rid of the runoff as well. Don't leave your plants sitting in its own shit. Please don't. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I don't know, like that. I've seen that a few times where people just put their pots right into the catch pans and you will have some capillary action like the the plant will reabsorb that really concentrated salty water mm-hmm. into the bottom of the root zone and then yeah like like Mackie was mentioning earlier you're going to get that salt build up down there and then like really fuck with the the rhizosphere mm-hmm. so don't do that so you, as you there's a lot of things that can go wrong you know you got to try and not overfeed that's uh, the most common issue you'd see in with, with most new growers growing cannabis is they'd overfeed the plant and that can cause loads of issues, man. Uh, overwatering can be an issue if you're growing in soil. Now, underwatering, not so much. You know, if, you, if your plant starts to wilt, like all of the leaves on the plant are just wilting and you lift up the pot and it's super light, you can just lift it up with no issues at all, then that means the, the medium needs to get some water in it. You shouldn't be able to pick up the pot on, on a decent sized pot anyway. You know, if it's a small pot, of course you can. But you should have a, a pretty heavy pot when it's properly saturated. But so ha- it when it, or just pick it up when you do water it and be like okay that's the weight and mm-hmm. then if you're like throwing it when you pick it up next time it's pretty much it's what i do <laughs> is i try lifting it you know i don't put too much effort in. i just try lifting yeah, it yeah. if it's like now nah, you ain't moving unless i want to put effort in it's like well that's fine then but if i can lift it with absolutely no effort at all <laughs> exactly. it's like oh shit yep. my plants can't die <laughs> <laughs> Is it okay to leave uh, water SG2 acid? Is it okay to leave off uh, leave off runoff in just water growth? So you know, leaving the plants sitting in water in just water growth, you can do, mate. It's just if it's there for too long. Say if you just water it, because it happens to me. I'm in fabric pots, right? And I'd water it, and it will piss out the sides sometimes, and it will land in the tray to collect the runoff. And for for like ten minutes after that happens, I'd leave it there because it will be resaturated by the soil if, if need be. But if the, if the soil is fully saturated and it's still sitting in runoff, that's where you're going to start seeing problems. So you need yeah. to get rid of the, the water in them cases. But you want to make you sure that your soil is properly saturated first. You Sorry, drown it, basically. That's yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. If do the that. water doesn't reabsorb within like 15 minutes, you probably need to get it out of that saucer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Good idea. 15 minutes is about like a good time. And if it's still there, get it out. Because the... the it's anaerobic bacteria will start to grow when there's no air available to it and it will start eating right. up your roots. You'll start, it'll start smelling like uh, rotten eggs and, and shit like yeah, that. It's it real bad smell. It, it's funky. You won't like. If it wasn't rapidly reabsorbed, the plant doesn't need it. Mm-hmm. Husky says too frequent waterings in cocoa will cause problems. No, it shouldn't, mate. As long as you're getting rid of it. Cocoa can handle being no. watered every 15 minutes, man. I've literally grown micros on constant drip. 
mm-hmm. and they did fine. Yeah, cocoa is it's got perfect drain, it's perfect water retention. It's tricky, but yeah, if you keep the nutrient level light, you can almost constantly feed cocoa. It's it's been done. So, how do we fix these problems then? You know, if, if somebody has an issue with their plant, obviously they've noticed it, and it doesn't look like a healthy cannabis. It doesn't look like an Instagram plant. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, th- th- let's talk about that. You know, in your normal grow, in your normal tent, by the end of a run, does your plant look like an Instagram plant? Mine doesn't because you know what? My plant's old. It's, it's lived mm-hmm, a long mm-hmm. life and it's done a lot. It's given me some beautiful buds and it looks kind of like it's beat up and, and, and it's done its job. Mm-hmm. Instagram grows. It's, they're like thinking that like, you know, this, no offense to celebrities, but you know, like people who put a lot of makeup on and then that's the only version of them you see and then you mm. see them in the tabloids and they're like oh that's you know <laughs> that's what they look like that's reese um, witherspoon <laughs> yeah or i like reese witherspoon but yeah um, anyway that's that's the same with plants i actually was going to do a comparison i still have the pictures and I, maybe i will post them they're not really that like crazy but um the difference between right when i took my plant out of the tent i took a picture of it with all the dead scraggly shitty looking leaves on it and then i picked all those leaves off and i took some pictures and it looks like you know like a fucking million bucks now mm. so bonsai and shit that's what people do you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah and everybody has issues with their plants it's not like you're the only person who's ever had issues so don't Definitely. worry if you need to come and get help everybody's asked for help before nobody begins doing this and just an expert straight away everybody has issues man so the first thing you need to do is go and get help from people who know what they're looking at. And that's people on a cannabis growers forum, like, like Percy's growroom.com head over to Percy's and we're not going to be there and be like, ah, look at you. You don't even know what's wrong with your plant. Noob. What are you growing for? You noob. And, and shit if like somebody that. does that to you, they will be banned from our forum. That's yeah. We don't works. have that shit, man. We don't play that shit. Mm-hmm. We don't do that. We've I all would. been in that position. We've all been it fucked before. Fun. Nobody yeah. likes to have a dead, dead or sick plant. Mm-hmm. Are you saying TG? I don't know. Well, nothing, but it's just that that mentality is such a weird one to me. Like, yeah, oh, you don't know something I know? Fuck yeah, I'm gonna make fun of you now. <laughs> <laughs> like none of us knew this once, you know. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yes, yeah. my ego. It's, people are strange, man, but you won't see any of that over at Percy. It is as Monkey said, it's a ban for offense. So people will get banned and removed from the forum for speaking to people who need help like that. It's just not the right way to go about things. So if you do have a problem at any time, just come and sign up to Percy's, put a picture up of the plant and we'll and some information. There's a form which you fill in and I'll ask you for certain information about what you're feeding, how often, what medium are you in and things like that. And we'll be able to help you out and you get some quick answers to it. And mm-hmm. don't panic really? too much. It's an important one. I'll just say, say this, TG, sorry. Uh, yeah, you know, sorry. Nothing is really going to affect the plant too badly within 24 hours. So, you know, as soon as you find help, you're on the way to fixing it. It's not like you got two hours and your plant's going to be dead unless you fix it. It's very rare. Something, you know, if the fucking thing's on fire, then you obviously need to act quickly. <laughs> don't put a post up on the forum. <laughs> but if you see bugs, if, you, if it looks like it's suffering with a, a new deficiency, something like that, then you've got a few hours, 24 hours to sort to start fixing it before there's any major issues. So don't panic too much. It's all fixable. Sorry, TG. No, my bad. I just wanted to quickly, like, actually promote uh, the idea of the forum because, you know, you can buy Jorge's book, Ed Rosenthal's books. All those books are great. I have most of them myself. That's how I learned a lot. But one thing that they do lack in is different examples of the same thing right then you might have five or six different pictures of magnesium deficiency but not all magnesium deficiencies look identical so by drawing on the collective knowledge of a forum like we have yeah. is like invaluable because somebody probably has seen what you have and will be able to help you whereas in a book it's like well kind of looks like that but mm, kind of looks like that too so mm-hmm. you know and you don't have anybody to bounce ideas off of and stuff like that so yeah the forums are like for for learning and growing and diagnosing and stuff are massively well, like we've discussed valuable. many times man everybody's doing their thing different there's mm. it's very rare you see one grow that's exactly the same as somebody else's grow exactly, so yeah. the inputs the the temperatures the fan bats blowing at it because of the fan burning shit all of the all of this shit needs to be taken into consideration when you want to properly diagnose a plant problem and there's loads of things it can be it's difficult for anybody who's new to this shit to look at it and be like oh it must be that you can get an idea 
But if you go to a forum, then people there have already had all these problems before. You know, they're actually experienced with this shit. So when they see the problems, they can be like, oh, oh well, I had that. And on my last grown man, I don't know exactly what the fuck that is. And you can be properly advised on how this person got over it. You know, and that's the same with bugs as well. You can get help with uh, diagnosing bugs. I mean, bugs can be easy to diagnose because they're bugs. You go to Google, you can take a picture of it with this Google lens thing you have now. And it's uh-huh. just like, look, look, what the fuck is that? And they'd be like, that's a thrip. Congratulations. And and it'd be able to tell you what kind of bug it is because you can see them, but there's you can't see all the bugs, especially if there's only a few of them as well and it's, it's small in the numbers. It's hard to see. Spider mice mm-hmm. are very difficult to see with the naked eye. Some people might have to use a microscope to see them things, and you're more likely to see the effect of the that it's having on the plant. Like there'll be small little bite marks in it, but they look, they look like pinpricks. It's so small, and that's from where Scratches the juices almost. are. Being, yeah, yep. when shit's being sucked out of the plant, and you don't know what it is because you haven't seen a bug, and you've looked everywhere, and you still haven't seen a bug. But if, uh, if you think you have bugs on your plant, a great way to find them is if you get a piece of white paper, like A4 paper or whatever, and you hold it underneath your plant, then you shake the plant, and there's going to be bugs that are going to fall off and land onto this piece of paper so you can properly identify them. So that's uh, always a nice trick if you want to try now, and find the bugs, because seeing them on the plant is difficult. If you do this and you're looking at spider mites, what you're going to be looking at is something that almost looks like dust. But look very closely at that dust and see if it moves. Mm-hmm. There are diseases too. Sure. There's lots of diseases that can mm-hmm. affect. And diseases are a bit tougher to diagnose because generally, I would say out of the you call them the big three issues or nutrient deficiency, bugs, or um, environmental. Uh, what the fuck was I just talking about? Fuck disease. <laughs> disease. <laughs> Jesus common, Christ. Common oh, um, diseases are the ones that people run Smoking into. Smoking that, that skunk number one again, bro. <laughs> yeah, fuck, man, that was fuck. I hate when that happened. It makes me look so dumb. <laughs> I just literally, I couldn't, I just, it was gone. I had no idea what I just said. But, what was that word I just me. said? <laughs> oh, anyway, disease. Diseases are tough because, you know, you get like some rust spots or something, which is actually from a fungus. It might look a little bit like a potassium or a phosphorus deficiency where you get some like dead spots on your leaves, Mm -hmm. but really it's not that because it's only on these two leaves, not the whole like plant, like Mackie said, starts at the bottom and moves its way up with the mobile nutrients kind of thing. And from an untrained eye, you might just be like, oh, phosphorus. Okay, quick bone meal. Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. if I saw it, I'd be like, no, man, that's like fungus. You need like some copper or you need some compost tea or something like that. So. Again, valuable uh, insight from people who have seen a lot of stuff and mm-hmm. different people who've seen different stuff, right? right. So, Well, the other disease you're going to see commonly, uh, well, not commonly, but possibly show up in your tent is going to be powdery mildew as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, you know, that, that depends what your environmental conditions are in your tent. You know, if you start seeing something that looks like, well, powder on your, on your leaves. It uh, looks like powder and it looks a little bit like mildew. Yeah, so we call it powdery mildew. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. The zinga. No, that is one. Of, that's that's one pathogen that can, can be in an overcrowded tent, and sure. you, it's one that's always possible in your tent because the spores are always there. Mm-hmm. They just need oh. the right conditions to get fired up, and exactly. the same with bud rot as well. Because we didn't quite mention bud rot. I suppose we need to cover that in a in an episode upon itself. Oh yeah, man, that's a heartbreaker unto itself, right yeah. there. Mm-hmm. You know, if your buds look rotten it's because they have bud rot i'm afraid <laughs> <laughs> there's so many things that can go wrong when you're growing cannabis but it doesn't happen often as long as you keep things you know keep things steady don't go too crazy don't try and uh, step outside of your comfort zone too much and you right. should be able to get a pretty smooth grow but there may be issues as well and you know if, but if there is issues there's plenty of communities out there like Percy's Grow Room, we recommend Percy's Grow Room because that's our forum. That's where we all are. But there are mm. other ones out there. You know, find out right. what you like. But Percy's is the best one, in my opinion. In my opinion, that's all. Because you can oh, win yeah. fucking HLG six hundred aspects over there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> well, like we said, if you want our help, you have to come there. And then also, you're not going to get called like a fucking dickbag for not yeah. knowing something. So no, we'll Is actually it... answer the same question we answered for everybody else for you, and we're not going to say anything bad about it because we were we were new once as well. We actually had yeah. somebody sign up to the forum and say that recently this week, where they said uh, they they was over at another forum and they saw somebody ask about venting outside. 
And it's like when I vent outside, I just put the vent outside the window, you noob. It's like, <laughs> are you serious? That shit, it's like, why do people do that, man? It just makes no sense. What we such a dick for? You know, who hurt you, man? No, <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. You stop being it's a knob. People, just little, little people behind their little computers that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know, just fucking weird. Why do you yeah. get off? Making people feel like shit. It's Come over to Percy's. Uh, per- Twisty says here, Percy members wants to see you succeed at growing and we like pigs plants. Indeed. We want everybody to be nice and high off their own homegrown cannabis. And you don't do that by being addicted to them, do you? No, the absolute best way to get from seed to harvest is start a diary at Percy's and let us mm-hmm. help you. And mm-hmm. we will do it for no charge and we will not be mean. We just want your soul, right. your we eternal just soul. Watch you smoke your cannabis. <laughs> nah. We just want to see you succeed and teach somebody else is what we want. Yeah, and maybe win some cool shit too. You know? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, there, Bubba Hawk says here in the chat, there are some toxic forums out there, and there is really there is the, some places that will just put you off even trying this shit. Don't yeah, we do can it. Give man. you a few names, but we're not going to do that. Yeah, well, we, we're not that. We're not that kind of people. I mean, I might do. We were like one time to do a private stream <laughs> and just go on about these motherfuckers but you know n- n- not public it's just not professional is it we no, it's best just, not to slag people off but hang out at percy's we'll treat you right we'll get you mm-hmm. the cannabis to harvest and you know that's it and then you can teach other people and it's not like you won't have plant problems but you know problem shared is a problem halved man and there's a lot of people to share the problems with over at percy's and we can all help you get get it fixed yeah but getting a pro if you have nutrient issues flushing the plant and making sure that the ph is balanced is a good way to go if you have issues with bugs then you know some uh some deterrents some ipm so some pesticides might be able to be used if you're not in a flowering plant but most of the time you can reduce the numbers massively just by changing the environment and making it a little bit warmer a bit windier you know less humid you can sprinkle stuff on top of the soil to damage the eggs of some bugs there's loads of ways you can get over it without having to use pesticides. And then you can always introduce bugs into the grow room that will eat the bugs that are eating your so, plant. That's something I wanted to just quickly touch on is, you know, the best doctors are the ones whose patients don't get sick in the first place because they prevent them, right? Mm-hmm. So just like humans, proper diet, proper exercise, we stay alive for 100 million years and we're like Tommy Chong, right? He's like almost... He's almost 90 now, right? Mm. This is birthday. So, and he looks great because he takes care of himself. Just like with your plants, you provide them with, like Mackie said, beneficial bugs. I do that all the time. I infuse my soil with uh, beneficial nematodes to eat the fungus gnat larvae and the thrip larvae. I infest my soil. Infest is probably the wrong word. Infuse with a BTI bacteria, which is also a deterrent. It's a beneficial bacteria that will eat. Uh, or not eat, but infect uh, fungus gnat larvae uh, as well, because I have issues with those. So I use both, as well as spraying compost tea, like I mentioned in the chat, both uh, do a drench in your soil to infuse it with, again, more beneficial microbes, and then spray it on your leaves, because once you get those defenses up, it makes it a hell of a lot harder. Elaine talked about this uh, when we we talked about her, or talked with her, Um, you know, if you have defenses up on your plants to begin with, it makes it so much harder for pathogenic uh, bacteria and funguses and stuff to even take hold in the first place. And then again, there's the prevention. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's better not to deal with stuff and then have to spray, you know, your plant with crap. Uh, or if you're in flower, you're like, you're, you have even less options cause you can't spray. Um, so yeah, just and prevent you, it. You can always use witch doctory and dance around the plant naked with an apple in your mouth too. That works. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like fun. <laughs> But yeah. Does it change the flavor of the cannabis when you do that? You know, uh, maybe uh, I've actually, <laughs> actually tried it myself. You know, <laughs> I was kind of wondering there. You know, <laughs> this is what I do for every crop before harvest. Look, they're awesome, man. Though, and then you get you know, a microscope just... and you fucking look at yeah. them and shit. Yeah, it's cool. Mm. Yeah, prevention is better than cure, and you know, it's easier said than done. Really, everybody wants to try and prevent it, but these things do happen sometimes. But with a proper feeding regime. And some, there's some good bacteria in the medium and the proper environment. You should rarely see any problems, really. You just take practice. Don't be scared. You know, things will happen. It will, there are difficult times where you can get over to purses and you can get plenty of help, and it's all good. Don't panic, though. It's like really mm-hmm. good advice. I think you said that. Uh, yeah. yeah. And don't, don't think, don't, don't think you can take that picture and stick it up on Twitter 
or Instagram or even Facebook and be like, look, everybody, I've got this yellow leaf. Can you help me? Because oh, they're going to fucking be dicks about it. They, so, they're going to descend on you like a, like a horde and just mm-hmm. completely take the piss out of you. So come to Percy's instead. Now, Percy's is Mackie's Virtual Hotel California. You can check out anytime <laughs> you like, but you can never leave. <laughs> is that a song or something? I don't, I don't know. Huh? Is that a song? You, you are joking, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They shit on him hard, man. April <laughs> Fools, man. April Fools, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> we were just about to go the... copyright infringement there and just yeah, fire yeah. at you and be like, you have to hear this, TG. This no, no, it's shit. like the it's the Rolling Stones' is like most famous song, isn't it? Oh god, yeah, that's it, TJ. <laughs> Here we go that's again. it. Yeah. It's fun, mm. bro. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> you know how we said there's no trolls at Percy's? No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what else do we need to cover before we move on from this? Uh you know, for just fixing things, just prevention is better than cure, especially with bugs and with nutrient deficiencies and with the environment. As long as you've got your environment set up right, you are feeding mm-hmm. the plant right, and you're you're properly sourcing your medium so it hasn't got bugs in and the clones haven't got bugs on them, then you should be fine. Everything we've covered already in the past will help you prevent any of this stuff happening. But if it does mm-hmm. happen, then you can just come over to Percy's Grow Room and we'll be able to help you out with, uh, with all the information you need. Chubba says, Matthew Gates is leading IPM specialist. Coming to Ohio Home Grown soon. Couldn't have said it better myself, Chubba. Thank you very he much. He's already that. got an appointment with That's us. That's right. He does. And we'll be talking about how to prevent bugs getting into your grow room and all that kind of shit. But we've got some real cool interviews coming up very soon. So stay tuned, man. You already know about the two this week if you listen to the cannabis news. So, uh, so that's about it for uh, noticing deficiencies and plant problems and shit and how to fix them. You know, just stay calm. Don't panic. Don't do any. If you think you have a problem, make sure you get a proper diagnosis before you move forward as well. Because if you think you have the right diagnosis, but it is incorrect, you might actually be just making the problem worse. So come and get a second opinion over at Percy's and you'll be yep. fine. Being there, done that, man. Think you got it done and you start spraying and you start doing and all you're doing is making things worse. But no, no, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. <laughs> no. Nope. Sometimes you just throw it further out of whack doing that. So yeah, ask, ask, we'll go ahead and give you a, a better answer. Give you three minutes till 420 says Chilbert. Uh, so cool. twisted, sorry. Let me go ahead and get a fresh bowl going. Now. Yeah, build up everybody, get ready. Um, you didn't say much there, Martin and Marge, man. Marge, what do you think about this? I think you guys all give very good advice. And, uh, <laughs> and Percy's is the best place to go because I do find everybody there super supportive. And anytime I've had you know, posted some diaries, I've posted a couple by now. People are really encouraging. So if you're new to growing, or even if you've been growing for a while, you should definitely go check it out. Mm-hmm. What are you, you saying? Everyone's going everyone's gonna to encounter problems at some point. I haven't encountered a number of the problems we've talked about today, but I have definitely encountered a few of them. So, mm-hmm. yeah. What are you saying, Martin? Anything to add to all of this? Um, no, I think he covered all the bases. I think, uh, yeah, um, I think, yeah, he done an excellent job there. I've not much really to add to, to all of that. Just don't panic. Don't and, panic, keep it yeah. up, panic. And so long, so long, and thanks for all the fish. <laughs> yeah, somebody mentioned the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy there, right? Don't panic. <laughs> yeah, don't panic. Uh, so we'll move on with some questions. But Artman, was it Artman? I think it was Artman. I got it written down here as Artman. But he asked, who is Percy and what is Percy's Grow Room? And we've discussed a lot there just about what Percy's Grow Room is. And Percy's oh, Grow Room my, is... Can I take a guess at that one? <laughs> you, you want to take a guess, Martin? Is, is it your man Percy Troar, that British gardener? That no, fucking... it's not, bro. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know I who the fuck he that would guy was. Sure. I didn't even know. Like, after I'd made this shit, somebody said to me, like, is it like Percy Thrower? I'm like, who the fuck is Percy Thrower? <laughs> <laughs> like no it's it, because um because it, growing cannabis is illegal in most places around the world we don't want to raise any red flags and bring any unwanted attention to ourselves by being some fucking hardcore growers growing hundreds of plants so it's just uh personal uh, like percy for personal use so growers for personal use people who grow cannabis for personal use their grow room 
And Percy is everybody. Percy is like you, me, TG, Monkey, Marge, all of us. We all grow cannabis for personal use. So we are all Percy growers. So it's Percy's grow room. It's everybody's grow room who grows cannabis for personal use. That's what Percy's grow room means. Ah, nice. Yeah. It was, I thought it was just obvious when I, when I first made it up, like, was like oh, that's a really cool name. That would work really well. But you know, I think it must be like a UK thing, you know, just because we have a uh, you know, Percy, Percy use and shit. But that's what it is for per people who grow cannabis for personal use, for you to go and get your help and, and have a sense of community and not feel like a degenerate criminal all the time. And ha having people to talk to about this shit that you love, it's important. 420, it's so the time for a bang record. Yeah? Yep, smoke <laughs> everybody, smoke, it's 420. <laughs> Twisted is spamming the chat with 420 there, so everybody hit that. And if you're listening to the download as well, if it's, even if it's not 420, it's 420 now for us. So join us. Smoke. <laughs> Grab your shit. And there's Noxy. What's up, Noxy? But, uh, then we have a question from Woody. Monkey, do you want to hit this question? Which question is this? Uh, from say, Woody. Where is it? Woody. Okay. What soil or medium should I use to plant seedlings in? Uh, I will be growing in a super soil. After the seed is sprouted and needs a temporary home in a solo cup or something. So if I have my super soil ready and my seed is cracked, exactly what type of soil should I put them in? I have Coco Loco and Fox Farms that isn't Coco, but a soil additive. And it looks like it should work. Should I use this product? And if so, how? Well, I would, uh, I mean, I'll jump in first before TG takes it. TG knows his shit here. But when I go into my soil, which is a super soil, I suppose. Well, this is a living soil. I don't know. Well, I, I, but it's highly amended, very dense of nutrients in this soil. So I'd get the pot filled and I'd take a, a handful of the soil out in the middle and I'd fill that with normal cocoa qua, just you know, normal cocoa, you know, just some canna in the bag, drop it in there and I'd plant the seed in that. And I won't even pH the water or anything. I still continue to use normal water because when the roots grow big enough, then they'll grow into the cocoa and it's not going to be shocked by all of the nutrients in it. And by the time the roots have grown out of the cocoa into the soil, the plant should be big enough to uh, not get shocked by the amount of, by the amount of nutrients in the soil. That's what I do. And it works well. It does well for me. But yeah, um, well, Marge, you grow in living soil as well, don't you? So. Well, what's your technique when you go and plant a new seed? Do you put it straight into the soil? Do you use something beforehand? No, I just put it right into the soil. Yeah, and but you do paper towel first, and then when the tap roots out, you plant it in. I just I actually just put them in water until they I get that little tap root, and then I put it right in the soil. I don't even, and because I'm doing micros too, I'm putting it right in the final pot as well. I'm not putting it into some like smaller cup and then transferring it to something bigger. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's a little more geared to someone who's doing micro grows but yeah blazy but star says uh, make you try use some micros to big roots is i used to mate i used to use all sorts of shit but it, i just found out eventually it's not really necessary i'm using soil that's been recycled many times and it's got a good microbial life in there as far as i know and that it just seems to do well on its own i don't need to add any uh any extra microbes you use eco five a lot of you just great white before and i just after time we just find it's not necessary you can do fine without it well elaine said if you keep the microbes healthy you're good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what you say martin what's yours how, how do you grow you do you, you grow in soil or cocoa what's your school well when i used to grow before i used uh I, i've done it in all all mediums actually i've tried mm -hmm. soil hydro cocoa um so i've tried it all and uh, to be honest the thing i like most was um maybe the cocoa um in an indoor environment but if, if i was to really say a preference I, I would definitely prefer to be doing soil outdoors getting ready now and you know doing a lot of autos there in, in the potty tunnel that that would be ideal um but yeah co cocoa was probably best for the indoor environment that i thought mm -hmm. cocoa is a good medium man you know, even though I'm a living soil grower now, cocoa still, yeah. cocoa is still my true love. <laughs> and I, I know you weren't a big fan of them, but I, I used those auto pots as well before, and uh, I, I got the extra large ones as well. And I have to say, man, the things were fucking, uh, they were so easy to use. Like the, which are the uh, auto pots, the ones which sip from the bottom. Yeah, yeah, the bottom feeds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and uh, no, that they were really cool. But yeah, you do have to do a flush like every, every two weeks, you know, and just just make sure that you don't get that extra soil or salt build up at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. But, but even if you did, uh, at the bottom of the pot actually is just a lot of perlite, so it's not actually the cocoa that's at the bottom. So the uh, there, there's no real mm-hmm. root rot because the roots don't really grow into the co- or to the perlite down below, and you also have. Uh, a, co- a copper sheet going across the bottom of the pot to stop the roots from growing out as well. Um, so it's it's a really interesting system. But what I found cool about it was um, y- you could literally go in for a few days. It's just if you had to go in for a long weekend or something like that, once you kept your reservoir topped up, if you had a big enough reservoir, yeah, you yeah. could probably go away for nearly a whole week and uh, the plants could just go away. You do, the only problem you probably have is maybe growing up into the lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Um, but those, those auto pot systems are really cool uh, very hands off kind of a thing like, um, for, for the lazy gardeners out there <laughs> uh, they're fucking this uh, this living soil thing has been so easy for me it was like like four days in between visiting my tent the other day and when I got there it's just still fine it, yeah. it didn't even need fucking watering to be honest I watered it because it was there <laughs> He's like, I could have left it for another day or two probably it's, it's crazy it's just how much easier it makes compared to being in cocoa where you're you watering every day. Yeah, that sounds like a fucking echo chamber here now. Shut and up, I, TG! Uh, ah. Like I told you, when I <laughs> when I had to go away for three weeks at a time, that's why I developed my soil in the mm. first place. So then it could just be left. Cheryl would like forget. But you like, can oh, get the oh, well. over there, uh, TG. Can you, are you able to get them? Probably, yeah. You haven't used them? No, I've never used them myself but uh so uh, just uh before we move on here tg we had a question from woodall woody oh. i always say woodall it's fucking <sighs> but he asks pretty, <laughs> pretty much in, what do you do when you're planting seeds do you go into cocoa first or some kind of other medium before you put it into the strong living soil what's your what's your plant when you have new seeds that's a good question i get that one fairly often i go right into my soil you know um, pretty much everyone is like, like they always gasp and are like, "Oh my God, you you do what?" Because <laughs> it's it is hot, I guess, comparatively. But um, the only issues I've ever really had have been transplanting um clones into my soil right off the bat. A lot of the the leaves that are already existing, you know, that are still on the clone, those ones get burnt. But mm-hmm. then the new growth is just like perfect, and then it outgrows it in like three, four days. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I just plant my seeds right into the soil. Sometimes maybe I'll dilute it a bit, like I'll take some plain potting soil, and I'll mix like you know just a small little cup. It's like a solo cup, or yeah, even yeah. a bit smaller than that. Worth I'll mix like three quarters of my soil plus one quarter of plain potting soil to like make it not as strong. Because um, by the time it runs out of food, you can transplant it. Mm-hmm. so yeah something like that but i i've never really had issue planting direct into my super soil the way that it's written on percy's and elsewhere but um if you modify it maybe maybe there might be issues but uh blazing star says before i plant seeds i go on a 10 mile drive to make sure nobody following me <laughs> first then i go back <laughs> home <laughs> so yeah be extra cautious man be extra, not that cautious i don't think you need to be that cautious <laughs> Um, does, do you use any kind of microbes or plant vitamins for seedlings here, which is at the end of Woody's uh, comment? No, I just germinate them in paper towel, you know, water. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're really vigorous and the tap roots just pop right out. Sometimes like up to 18 hours is pretty much as long as I leave them in the water. Mm. But lately I've been leaving me in the water, you know, and that seems to be okay. But 18 hours, you know, put them in paper towel, get them germinated and then, yeah. Uh, yeah. right into the soil i soak mine in some water for like four or five hours sometimes overnight and then just plant it in the middle yeah. of some cocoa in the pot and it, it, it like in the part of the living soil and it just goes fine from there man it's nice and easy if, you, if you're going to use mycorrhizal fungi that's when i'll like you're supposed to put them right on the root so when you do plant your yeah. seed just just like take a little pinch of that dust likely is what it is or, or if it's liquid just you know a couple drops of it in the hole and then plant it um, nice and easy. But that's it. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's all the questions we have for this week. And if you wanna, if you want us to answer any of your questions on next week's show, then head over to percysgrowroom.com and drop it in the listener thread 
so listener mail thread in the high number section it's all easy to find and there we go thanks for listening I hope you learned something from this episode. There's always a lot to cover when you talk about sick cannabis plants because there's so many things that can go wrong. But as long as you keep a good environment, you feed the plant properly and you keep bugs away from it, the plant should go from start to finish without having any major issues at all. But of course, if you do have any issues, just find us over at PersiSquareRoom.com and you'll always find somebody who is more than happy to help you out, no matter what the problem is. So just get over there and ask for help if you need it again don't forget about the hlg 600 r spec but you can win for absolutely free over at purses come and sign up get involved in the competition and a special announcement is we're going to have a birthday session Shh, don't tell anybody we're going to have a birthday session with tommy chong on the 23rd of may which is the day before his birthday so make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel at youtube.com slash high on homegrown and then you'll be able to join us for that special birthday celebration we're going to have soon But for now, that's it. I hope you have a good weekend. We'll see you on Sunday for the live show. Uh, And if you can't make Sunday, then you'll have the cannabis news for, for you ready for download on Monday. So enjoy. Have a great weekend. Thanks for listening. It's always a pleasure. Goodbye.